Uh, good evening, uh, members of Redeemer, family, friends. Uh, we're gathered around God's Word again and coming to Matthew uh, 6, verse 34, where Jesus addresses in one sentence, one verse, our future troubles that we bring into our presence, uh, into our present, uh, to, to be anxious about tomorrow. He has spoken about being anxious about our life circumstances and the Father's care. And here, uh, in contrast to the long argument and the very uh, clear argument, he comes and he, 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 he puts uh, in one sentence uh, his reasoning for why we should not be concerned about tomorrow. And it's put in such a way that he, he wants us to puzzle over it, to think about it. Um, and these are his words, verse 34. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Now, what is Jesus saying here? What does it mean that tomorrow will be anxious for itself? Tomorrow can't be anxious, can it? So what is he saying? And what does it mean that sufficient for the day is its own trouble? So he is saying tomorrow, now he might be jokingly saying tomorrow's problems is tomorrow's. It's not your problems. It's tomorrow's problem. Tomorrow will be anxious for itself. So leave tomorrow alone. <laughs> um, but he is, is also he is definitely saying that. But he's saying more than that. He's saying when you get to tomorrow, you can deal with tomorrow's problems. But you can't deal with tomorrow's problems today. Because today you have enough problems for today. So he is telling us to live every day in the moment and not grab ahead to pull into our present what belongs to our future. Leave your future to be the future and live and do what you're supposed to be doing now. So if, if we were farming, then there is a time, and today was the time, to sow the seed. We can't sow the seed and already fear or anticipate the harvest. That lays months ahead of us. Don't grab ahead, is what Jesus is saying. Do what you need to do today, because today you have enough trouble as it is. Sufficient enough for today is its own trouble. Now, it means that the responsibilities we have today, responsibilities that God has given us, is enough. Now, how do we live? in this reality, day by day, um, not grabbing a hold of tomorrow and bringing it into today. Remember the Israelites when they were in the wilderness and they, they had to go out every day to get manna. Only on the Sabbath, uh, on, the, on the Saturday or the Friday before the Sabbath, they could gather two days. But every other day they had to go out every day to get manna. Otherwise it would, it, it would stink. It was God's way to tell them, you need to live in dependence upon me every day. And so that's the only way we can live today for today without being anxious about tomorrow. Now, 
let's tease that out. How do we live in dependence upon God day, moment by moment, dealing with today's problems and not tomorrow's problems today? Well, first of all, you and I need to trust God that he will never give us more than we can handle. So when it says sufficient for today, it is literally, we have grace and we have what we need to deal with it today. There's enough manna, enough grace for today. There's this beautiful verse where the Apostle Paul talks about uh, uh, temptations that come our way, but it, he encapsulates for us uh, the a principle of God's care that won't uh, give us trouble that are more than what we can bear. He says in verse uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. God will give not only the trouble, the temptation, but he will give you a way of escape and the grace to endure it. The way in which you may handle the problem, God will help you and give you exactly what you need. You don't have to worry that the problem that God gives you is too much for you to bear because he promises grace to you. But then, not only does God promise grace and he won't give us more to handle, also, you need to realize that when you get to tomorrow, there will be manna again for you. There will be grace again for you tomorrow to deal with tomorrow's problem. There is this beautiful verse that we've looked at in Lamentations 3, verse 22 and 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God's mercies never come to an end. They never stop. They never run dry. They never empty. And so every morning there's new mercies. There's new grace for the problems we face tomorrow. So when you go to sleep and you wake up in the morning, the Lord will give you the grace you need for the troubles that you will face that day. Troubles that he has sovereignly designed and therefore wise. They won't tax you beyond what you can bear and the grace he gives you meets you there tomorrow. But you don't have today the grace for tomorrow. So when you take tomorrow's problems and you bring them into today, they begin to stink like the manna would because you don't have the grace to deal with them now. They will only bear you down. But God's mercy for tomorrow's trouble awaits you tomorrow. So trust him. And that leads us directly into the third thing. Trust God with your future. The future is in his hands. That's such a beautiful reminder. The future is in God's hands. It's not in your hands. That's why Jesus is telling us, leave tomorrow alone. Don't mess with tomorrow. It, it, it's God's dealing. This That beautiful reminder in Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever, which means God does not change. So when we entrust the future into his hands, we know that the God we're going to meet tomorrow is the same God who has revealed himself in Christ. The same God who has come to us as Savior and have made us his own. We're not going to meet a different God tomorrow. A God who don't care, a God who don't love us. No, tomorrow we meet the same God because he doesn't change. And the future is in his hands. And so you and I can rest from worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. How will things turn out for us? Because 
God will meet us there. We're not going to go into tomorrow by ourselves. No. He is there already waiting for us as his mercy and grace is waiting for us. So leave tomorrow in God's hands. Don't take it into your own. Isn't this an incredible encouragement, a beautiful reminder? We have really no reason to be anxious. And yet we are, aren't we? And that's why Jesus speaks to us so directly, because he knows our hearts and he knows how hard it is to believe. Peter tells us, cast your cares upon the Lord, because he cares for you. So let's do that now. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we are encouraged to leave tomorrow in your hands. And yet, O oh Lord, you know how our minds and hearts are so prone to run ahead and to grab tomorrow's problems and to fret about them. Help us to remember that we can trust you and help us to do that. We thank you for the promise of your grace that meets us every day and that the problems we face you have so designed that they will never tax us beyond what we can bear. So in this crisis, be with those, O oh Lord, who feel themselves so exhausted because they're running on energy that is their own. Let them draw from the supply that you supply. And may you give that those who are sick and ill may truly come to rest in you knowing that in you they have a saviour that can save beyond uh, through our earthly struggles and sicknesses. Help your people, Lord, and give grace. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you and your family have a wonderful evening and you would know the, the presence of God's uh, grace and peace in Christ. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful evening.